Hi guys! So I have quite a lot of interest in that uh, watercolor class that I'm teaching with the watercolor um, um, coneflower. And uh, I thought those of you who already joined the group and you have your supplies and maybe your hands are itching to start doing something, I decided to share this with you and also with those who have not used watercolors, that would be a great exercise. So I went ahead and purchased one of these also. I really was uh, excited because it was $15 versus the regular $30. So that made me super happy. And I thought, well, um, whenever I get new watercolor set, I really like to do the color, uh, color test and see uh, what it would look like. So I'm just going to open that and uh, we're going to do a watercolor test. So this set has um, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow. So that's your warm yellow, uh, cold yellow or cool yellow and warm yellow. Cadmium red and al alizarin crimson hue. Um, ultramarine, cerulean blue. Uh, viridian hue, sap green, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and Chinese white. So these are pretty much all of the colors that you would ever need to, you can use all of the, uh, to, to mix. So if you're going to mix your colors, um, this is your kind of set. And I really like that they have like this little paper here inside that talks really briefly but it does introduce you to different watercolor techniques um i did open this set earlier and so what i did hold on so these all were wrapped in plastic and stickers and uh, not stickers like a wrapping paper and so i pulled all of that out and i created a little guide for myself i just cut the little piece with the name of the uh paint and uh, I glued it on a piece of cardstock and then I used regular packing tape to kind of laminate it so it doesn't get wet. Uh, this way when I'm teaching, right, I know what I'm using. But also if you ever run out of the color, oh, it's hard to, okay, so since I haven't used them, they're still dry. On the side, it will have it will have a name for it. So if you ever run out of one color, you can just go ahead and buy just one color you don't have to reorder the whole set i also like that um i was really impressed with this little addition here that is very cool uh seems like a decent quality brush so if you're on the go and you want to paint that may come handy uh but i would suggest to have a medium that's a number five, a medium round brush for our, uh, for the cone flower. Okay. Um, yes. So what I was going to do, I'm going to create a little, um, um, what's it called? Like a table kind of thing. So I'm going to use my ruler. I have, how many colors do I have? I have 12 colors here. So, and I have six inches on that, so that's perfect. So I'm just gonna mark every half inch. And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna test every color, and then I'm gonna try and mix them also. So maybe I should test them first. Hmm. No, well, let's do that. I'm already starting on making a grid so i'm gonna make the grid i'm marking where i started so that i can do the straight lines because they will bother me if they're not straight i apologize for sniffles um so what i'm doing here is i'm making a grid for color mixing Oh look, I eyeballed. Almost perfect. 
half an inch because I only have 12. And you can use your pencil or, oh, sorry. <laughs> or you could use your um, waterproof pens, if you have any. Microns are good. I was gonna use Micron, but then I decided to go with the pencil because I think not everybody has microns. They're pretty specific to people who do art a lot, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Does not have to be perfect. But it's a grid. My cat is lonely sometimes. He gets he thinks that he's been left out of fun and so he just goes around and meows. Okay. And then I'm adding half an inch marks on the other side. And I'm just gonna do that. Oh. <laughs> Again, as I said, this does not have to be precise. Just create a grid. I am using watercolor paper. I should have mentioned that. And then this will become my color mixing guide for this for this set. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's see. I just got something that was not pencil. All right. So, for my mixing palette, I like to use this, it's a coral plate, and I've, I've tried and used a lot of different things for my watercolor, and so far, this plate works the best, it does not stain, I've used it for more than a year now, and um, I kind of put my watercolor on the sides, and then when I'm mixing colors or making my washes, I do them on the on the plate. And then when I'm done with my washes and my colors, I just spray it with water and wipe it down with a paper towel. And this way I can still use my um, leftover watercolor and not waste it. Okay, so I'm just going to spray this so that I have enough water on there. I have two jars with water. We're going to use, it's like a dirty jar and a clean jar. So the first one uses, you use it to rinse off the paint. And the other one is like a second rinse to make sure your brush is clean. And I'm going to start Scout Mill. Um, uh, and I'm going to start with just adding, ooh. A little bit of water on top of each of these cakes. Okay. Scout, leave it. And you guys can already see the color waking up. Okay, so let's start from the first one. The first one is lemon yellow. 
and then grab some of the cake and I'm not gonna do washes right now I'm just gonna put it on directly on my paper to get that color in okay oh, let me see yeah you should be able to see that Okay, uh, wipe it off on the paper towel, give it a good rinse, grab your next one. So the first one was lemon yellow, and it will help me to also remember cadmium yellow. That goes here, and here. Oh, I should have. And of course, when cadmium yellow meets, it's going to be cadmium yellow. <clears throat> I'm going to grab a little bit more of that lemon yellow and put it in here. Because when lemon yellow meets, meets lemon yellow, it's going to be lemon yellow. All right. Um... Cadmium red. Here. And here. And why I like to do this is because paint, when it's in the cake, doesn't look exactly what it's going to look like on paper. So it kind of helps to sorry for that about that now that one is alizarin ella alizarin crimson Ooh. and right here Fun stuff. Okay, ultramarine. Ultramarine, that's your warm blue. Cerulean blue. So as you see, I'm just picking up the the water that has paint on it. I don't really pick up a lot of paint off of the cake itself. Don't rub on the cake. Just go tap tap on that water. Okay. Ah, uh, Viridian hue. That's green. Very unrealistic green, right? But that's the thing about it is that even though it's very unrealistic, when you mix it with other colors, you can create hues of green that will work wonders for your painting. Okay, and then we have sap green. And yes, we will use the palette. I just pushed it away just for the next step. This one is just, we're going to set up the color. 
And then it's yellow ochre, which is a gorgeous color. Oh, for painting sand and like all of that. It's a good color to have in your palette. Looks almost gold, doesn't it? And let's grab my burnt sienna. You know what? I missed one row of squares. I should have done 13 because I did the row on top. Kind of didn't account for that. Oh, sorry, wrong color. Lift. Daisy, <laughs> that's bird sienna. That's not oh, okay. Pay attention, pay attention to what I'm doing. It's this one, okay. And the next one is burnt umber. There we go. And the one color I did not make a grid for, so I'm just going to add it super quick with my pencil if I find it. Yep. I know I just had it. Oh. Oh, well. I'll find it later. So we'll just keep it in mind that there is one more right here and it's white. What happens when you add white? All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a wash with lemon yellow. I'm going to grab quite a bit of it from my Cake here. Okay. And then I'm going to start grabbing, I'm going to make little puddles for each of the colors that I have here. And I put it in the wrong one. I'm trying to figure out the best way so that you can see what I'm doing. Here, let's put that aside for a second. Let's, okay, let's start over because <laughs> I already messed up. Just hold on. We're going to make little puddles of water with each color. Just clean this up. Okay. Okay, so here's lemon yellow. Here's cadmium yellow. Okay, where's my color names? Cadmium red. Alizarin, crimson. It's 
just out, leave it. Ultramarine. Cerulean blue. Iridian green. And uh, uh, sap green. Yellow ochre. All right, let's play with this. <laughs> and then we might need to move things around a little bit. So let's add, I'm just going to grab a little bit of lemon yellow and then I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium yellow to my lemon yellow and see what happens. Okay. And so lemon yellow plus cadmium yellow goes here. Wipe off. Now next step is lemon yellow. Add it to the red, the cadmium red hue. And paint it right here. Also, when cadmium red here is added to lemon yellow, so this is here, I can just fill it in. So I don't need to do that again. Okay. Okay, now next lemon yellow, add to this um, alizarin. See what happens. Okay, let's add it to ultramarine blue and see what happens. See, that happened. Yeah, I should have done it here too. Okay, I'm going to wipe off my brush and go back to that alizarin. Pick that up and fill this in. All right. What's going to happen if I add my lemon yellow to my cerulean blue? And so this is what you do. You kind of go down the, go down your colors and mix and see what happens. So what happens if I add my lemon yellow to Viridian green? This is a great exercise in color mixing, but this is also a great exercise for brush control. Set green with lemon yellow. And 
and so on. So let me see if this makes sense. I'm going to keep going and uh, I'll see you on Monday for the class. Have fun.